Welcome back to another video and today we're going to create a head control and it is going to be following along basically in every any direction that we want it to follow. So let's go ahead and let's dive back into our control rig once more and let's go ahead and let's set up our head. So what we need to do first is obviously we're going to need to create some kind of a control. So let's go down in the hierarchy of our bones and I'm just going to create a new control and I'm going to rename this to head control. Now let's go ahead let's bring this somewhere in front of our face somewhere around here the position doesn't really matter that much at all it should be fine in the way it is so then we can right click this and set initial transform from current position so let, let's let's leave it somewhere around here now for this whole thing we're gonna use a very simple node so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna bring these down a little bit because I'm going to use the C route from this one. And previously we used a node called aim math. In this situation, we're just simply going to use node called aim. And that's it. Without any aim math, just the aim node. Now for this node, we're going to need to specify the bone that we are trying to adjust. And in this case, this is our head bone, like so. Now once we do that, it should come up as something like this. The head is totally flipped because we don't have any values uh, applied to it. So we're going to need to specify our axis for the primary. And for the secondary, we're going to need to provide manually the axis and the target. Now, for the axis, let's begin from the top. So for the first one, we're going to want to use our forward axis of our skeleton. So let's go ahead. Let's look for our skeleton, which is over here. And let's select our head bone. Let's use the moving tool. And we can see that forward axis in this situation is our y axis so we're going to be wanting to use that now we can go through other bones that we're going to use in this video as well so like the neck that's the forward axis of it the same for the spines and all that stuff now keep in mind you're gonna need to know this for all of your bones hopefully all of them are in the same axis forward if not just memorize which is the forward axis for which bone right now we're just going to use our head but throughout the video we're going to use some couple of other of these bones as well to make a better effect so the whole character would turn rather than just the head itself so in this case i have y axis forward for all of these bones so it's going to be very easy for me for you it might be a little bit different but right now focus on the head so the forward axis is the y so we're going to apply one in the y axis now for the target we're going to want to grab our head control we're going to get the control we're going to split the transform and we're going to use the translation as the target value like this now we need to provide the other axis as well so for the secondary for the axis, we're going to want to use X because that is our up vector. So again, go back to your skeleton, select the bone and look. So the red one is the X axis, which is pointing upwards. So we're going to want to use that one. And then the last axis that's remaining going to be used in the target. So that's going to be the Z axis like so. Now, very, very important thing is that we change the kind for the secondary axis from the location to the direction and you're going to see the character's head moves in its position basically where it needs to be. So now if we would try and move this around you can see the character's head is following along with the control wherever it is. Right so we can move this out, move it up, move it down and if we move it behind them you're going to see that he actually moves his head around as well so that's going to be a bit awkward uh, so in the control rig it is going to work like this but don't worry about it we're going to adjust the values later once we actually implement the actors uh, then we're going to do some calculations so that this kind of a uh, motion is uh, impossible so it, he can't look behind him so we're going to do some math uh, for uh, that logic now obviously just having the head moving around isn't enough it doesn't look really realistic because if a person is looking really hard to the left or to the right he's probably going to move his upper body as well 
Now to have a little bit of a better visual effect, what I'm going to do is actually go to the preview of scene settings. If you don't have this tab, it should be available in the windows section. So you can look for the preview of scene settings and enable this to get this tab right here. And we're going to just change the default pose. So he isn't idling, but rather we're going to select use a specific animation. And we're going to use basically you can use any animation. Uh, for this case, I'm just going to use idle like this. There we go. Good. Okay, now let's implement the other bones as well. So the rotation of the body and the head looks more realistic. And for that, we actually are going to use a very simple trick. All we're going to do is we're going to reuse the same node a couple of couple of times. So I'm going to add another one over here, another one over here. Uh, let's start off with three nodes. Now we're going to leave exactly the same axis for all of them because my bone rotations and all that stuff for the neck and for the spine bones are the same. So we're going to go ahead and provide the targets for the primary axis. So the same values in all of these are going to work just fine. Now, like I said, you might have to change the axis if you have uh, your bones in uh, different rotations. And now the next thing we need to do is actually connect all of these in the execution line like so. There we go. And also we're going to need to change the bones themselves. So we have the head bone. Then before that, we want to go ahead and move our neck bone. And then we want to use our spine. Oh, uh, one. Yeah, that should be it that that it's doing like so. Now, if you want to have more motion where we can apply more bones, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Let's work with three bones for now. So as you can see, the character is bending very hard like this. Only if the object is far away, it's good. Otherwise, it's it's bending away very quickly. We don't want it to bend that quickly. We want to be able so the object can come closer to us. Because this is too far of a distance to make it like uh, reasonable for the character to bend like this. So we're going to change the weight of the prim primary axis. So th that's the actual effect uh, from from this aim mat. So we're just going to adjust it to be a little bit smaller. So for the spine 01, we're going to use like 0.2 or maybe 0.3. Then for the neck, we can go about something like 0.7. And now we're going to have a better result. So you can see we actually need to get closer for the character to start bending. If you think it's not enough, if you want more, obviously go ahead, bump this up, maybe like 0.5. And the character is going to bend even more. As you can see, but these values are totally up to you. You might have to go ahead and experiment with these values to see how much you want your character to be bending. Now, if you want even more motion, because let's say we do the sideways thing, right? The character is rotating his body with the whole thing. We can also apply even more bones. So let's say we grab this node once more. Actually, haven't tried this many bones, uh, but the logic says that this should work. We might get some a little bit weirder results, so they might not be as great if we use too many bones. We're going to go ahead and set those up anyway, and we'll see where this ends up in. So we can grab our spine 02, we can grab our spine 03, and in the hierarchy, uh, let's see, we have our spine, where is our neck? Uh, there is our neck, so he is below the 03. So it should be actually the other way around. So it should be spine 03 first and then spine 02 and then spine 01. And let's apply some values. Uh, let's say we leave 0.4 for all of them. And let's connect the translation to the targets. There we go. And let's see where this ends up in. Now again, our character seems to be bending a little quicker. Oh, but not too bad. Again, we can adjust these values. So how much he should be bending. So I believe now with more of these values, this does seem to be uh, more realistic and even better than it was before. There we go. 
So that's about it. So that's how it's going to work. Now, obviously, as of right now, like I said, we will be able to move this behind us and the character is going to do some mad stuff like this. But there is going to be a limit so he can't look too much behind him. We're going to enable something like a 90 degree or not even maybe maybe not even 90 degree. But you, you will be able to configure that and figure it out for yourselves. I'm probably going to be using something like uh, 70 degrees in each direction. So something like 140 rotation. And then it's going to do the trick just fine. So now that is going to be it for this episode. This was I know this was a very short one, but we have set up everything that we need so that we can actually start creating actual actors in the level uh, that the character can follow along with. And then we're going to provide that value inside of this control. So we're going to provide the location of the actor to this control. And then the following is going to happen very smoothly.